chilling, man. Just was, you know, waiting to do this, man. I've been waiting to do this for like what we planned this a couple of months ago, right? Yeah, so man. We've been, like... we've been promoting this shit hard body. Because you know yeah, what? Yeah. You're you're actually the first person to break down some real estate shit on this on this platform. So oh wow, okay. Yeah. So um like we normally it's it's for notaries, right? But we call it the notary war room because just like in war, you're fighting on if all different type of terrain. So you're fighting on war, I mean, on land, water, air. So it's not just enough to have your stamp and your commission to be a notary. A lot of these guys are making some pretty good money. So they want to start investing in the real estate. I love your as the market, as the stock market turns. Man, if you I guys haven't followed this guy. Hey, bring, <laughs> put put his uh, IG handle on uh in the chat, please, please. At Renaissance One Twenty Five, he has some of the best content I've seen. Like he keeps me highly entertained, but then educated at the same time. <laughs> he has this skit called "As the Stark Stock Market Turns." And he gives some of the funniest analogy. He was like, the last one you did, you said, uh, the S&P is down. Have you ever seen the bottom of a Louis Vuitton shoe? It was yeah. bloody red. I was crying. <laughs> yeah, man. It was just something that I did one day, just being silly. People kept DMing me like, man, I love this. You should just keep doing it. So I just, oh, it's you know. fantastic, bro. So... Oh. Okay, let, let, let's get right into it. We're, we're basically, this show is just about conversational. Bro, if you want to spark up, go ahead, do your thing. You know what I mean? This, I spark up <laughs> I'm like, in, in this war room, we we authentic. We're real. We're real people that do real things. Oh, man. Right? So, sure. shit, you want to crack a bottle? I ain't got, I, I ran <laughs> out of rum and shit, so. <laughs> so we'll get started. Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hit, man. Your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? Today, we have a very, very special guest. The very first guest of season two that is going to be dropping some real estate knowledge. If you haven't followed this guy, check him out on IG at Renaissance 125, we have special guest phenom here, Mr. Andre <laughs> Haynes. Give it a little round of ladies and gentlemen. Happy, bro, for real. <laughs> hey, man. So, okay. We chopped it up for a little bit. Tell people, for those that don't know where, the, where you come from, before you got into the real estate, before you got into the entertainment media, give people a little bit of a background of where you come from, bro. Um, I'm originally from the South Side of Chicago, the Ida B. Wells Projects. Um, I ended up being adopted into my own family where I ended up moving with my auntie who was out in Maywood. And that's where I um, pretty much started my, uh, my, you know, just my life journey and like, you know, meeting the friends that I've met, you know, building up my network and uh, kind of ending up in the space that I'm in now. Um, after so many years of questioning why God had me, you know what I mean, going through so many things and, you know what I mean, being taken away from my parents and all of these different things. Mm -hmm. Here we are, and I'm happy and helping a ton of different people every day and just like providing value every day of my life. And it, um, it just makes a, a ton of sense to me now. And um, I, my foundation is real estate, but I do have um, a couple of other companies as well. Um, real estate has pretty much freed me up to have to not work a nine to five. So I'm able to pour into my own ideas and my own companies. And um, that's um, worked out pretty well for me. Um, this is gonna be my first real year uh, monetizing. My business mm -hmm. started launching my um, real estate course in June of 2020. In addition to my real estate course, I'll be doing consulting. And also um, I'm about to launch my apparel. Uh, what you see now, me wearing samples of. I'm going to launch that this weekend, um, my Mindset Matters capsule. And um, yeah, man, just looking to add value to people every day and um, just grow my brand as much as I can, you know? Now, I, I, let me ask you, because I, I, I grew up in the hood too, um, but you said that you were adopted at one time, right? Yeah. So with, with does that play a role in you wanting to be more more giving to with your information or like because you it could have went either way especially in Chicago you know how that is 
Absolutely. Um, that's like a, a major, major uh, part of it. Um, just me knowing where I come from, me knowing that um, a lot of people want to, you know what I mean, get out of that position. A lot of people want to change their lifestyle. A lot of people want to like, you know, become owners and just like do these different things but don't have access to do it or necessarily even have access to the information to do it, which is the main thing for me. Like once I got access to the information, it was easy for me to start putting things in place and start making things happen because I didn't even know the information was out there. You know what I mean? Only thing that I was taught was this whole job thing, just this whole thing of being famous. Like where everything I saw on TV, I felt like that was the only way for me to make it. You know what I'm saying? Playing ball, rapping, you know what I'm saying? Entrepreneurship and all of these different things that, uh, provide freedom outside of sports entertainment and like music. It was just like mind blowing to me. And um, I, 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 I dove into this rabbit hole, man. And I haven't come out since I've just learned so much and just really like um, taking on a new identity and like a whole new lifestyle. You know what I mean? And um, that, that everything that I've read and come across always told me, you know what I mean? Like this information is going to change your life. So when your life starts changing, Make sure you pay it forward and teach the same information to other people and make it easier for them to retain it so that they don't have to go through the same path that you've gone through as far as, man, buying all of these books, going to these different seminars. You can find a whole different way to present this information to your people to where that they can uh, retain it a whole lot easier and better and faster than what you could because you have to read this stuff two and three different times in order for you to interpret and understand it. But now you have an understanding for it. You can go and speak this language to your people by using your lingo and using your slang and different words that they can understand as opposed to them having to go and try and, you know, pick through these books and these different magazines and these websites and learn when they have somebody like you who can kind of like expedite the process for them. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So like what and when you were first getting your your very first piece of property, what like I try I tried getting some property here in Chicago and and it, it, it didn't work out for me. And like I'm I'm not throwing in the towel. I plan to go back into the real estate game, but like walk me through like what was your first process? Did you get ripped off? Did somebody run off with your bread? Honestly, man, my process was like probably like one of the most amazing stories you'll probably ever hear um, when it comes to a start in real estate. Um, I went through a program called NACA, which is the Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America. Mm -hmm. And uh, the program was, um, I think, um, developed back in like 1990. It was designed to um, combat like um, illegal practices in real estate, like redlining and things like that. And uh, also to help minorities buy in their own communities. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stop slow down the gentrification process and having families displaced to move from where they're comfortable, you know, and where they have been their whole lives. Um, and I found out about this program through a mentor of mine uh, named Kyoki. She's like a big sister of mine. I called her one day. I had been working a job for a while. I had saved up some money, had been reading all of these different books and just educating myself on finance and stock market and all these different things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what I mean? Um, I'm ready to buy a house. And she was like, that's not cool and shit, but, um, you should probably buy yourself a multi-unit. Mm. You know? um, that was like the the deciding factor on which direction I was going to go because I had just read the same thing in Rich Dad, Poor Dad and her telling me that was like kind of like confirmation. It was like the bell going off on my head, like ding, 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 that's it. Mm. Go get your multi-unit. That's the second time you heard it. And then this time it came from somebody you love and trust. So it only made sense. And she was like, um, go look into this program called NACA. Um, they're a program where you can, you know what I mean, get in with them, no money down, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, oh, man, that sounds too good to be true. But she was like, it's legit. And um, I promise you, you know what I mean, if you do it, you're going you're gonna to be happy. So I went through the NACA program. And my first property, I ended up getting me a four-unit property uh, nice. in, in, a, in a very nice Chicago suburb called Forest Park. Um, right outside of the city, um, great amenities, access to the Green Line and the Blue Line train system, the expressway gets you downtown, uh, 10 minutes, um, Walmart, churches, malls, everything in the area, really nice schools. Um, I got a really good price on it. And um, in addition to me getting a good price on it, I didn't have to put any money down on the property. So I got the property with no money down. Um, when I closed on the property, I walked away from the closing table with the $5,000 check. And I closed at the end of the month. So the day that I closed, I went to the building. I started moving in. I started getting rent checks the very next day. Wow. So this, 
So I closed on the property. I kept all of the money that I had saved up, which was about $12,000. So I still had that in my account. Okay. They gave me another $5,000 after I closed, you know what I'm saying? Which ran right. up 15 grand cash. And then I moved into the building and the next day I started receiving rent checks of $1,000 or better from each individual property, which was three units at the time. So that's I wonderful. So you hit it out the park on your first go. Oh man, it was a, a grand slam. Was, like, right. Okay, so let me ask you this. How important was your credit for you to obtain, acquire that first piece of property? Was it well, with the program that I went through, um, it didn't really matter about credit because they're more so um concerned about your debt to income ratio and what's and what's on your credit. So your credit score doesn't matter, but they don't want you to have any debt on your credit. So like no collections or anything like that. You can get by even with student loans and stuff because you're paying that, but it will just go against your debt to income ratio, like what you could afford towards a home mm -hmm. property. But um, with NACA, they don't really concern themselves with your credit score. They just want to see that you don't have any debt in your current name and um, that you're currently working and you have income coming in. And whatever you're paying for rent, that's what you could afford towards a property uh, pretty much. And the good thing about multi-units is how it works is a lot of people are concerned about um, like the cost of a multi-unit. Like, man, a four unit in Chicago, man, we talking like a half a million dollars. I can't afford that. The mortgage thing gonna be three thousand dollars. I can only afford fifteen hundred or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. So if you go and find you a property that's already occupied and generating income, they'll take seventy five percent of the income that the property is already generating, add it to your income, and that's what will make that property available. So here's an example. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have this property generating $4,000 a month, right? And let's say the mortgage on this property is $2,500 a month, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say you only make at your job every month $1,500. So you're $1,000 under what the mortgage is, right? Mm -hmm. So what the mortgage company does is take three thousand of the four thousand dollars that the property is generating, add it to your income. So now you make forty five hundred dollars a month, and that's way more than affordable for a twenty five hundred dollar mortgage. You actually have two thousand dollars left over, and they didn't even factor in the extra thousand dollars from the seventy five percent. There's another twenty five percent, which is a thousand dollars that's not even factored into that number. So that's way more than enough for you to afford that property now, as opposed to you going to get a single family home, there is no income. So you could afford what you could afford out of your own pocket. But when the property is generating income already, they'll take what the property is generating, add it to your income. Wow. So in your experience, because your first property was a multi-unit, would you suggest that people look more into a multi-unit versus a single family all day? All day. He's like all day. <laughs> Second property is multi-units. Like, hell yeah. yeah. Because it just, it allows you to, it frees up your, your personal income that you have coming in that you work for, as opposed to you working for your money. Now you have to go and pay your mortgage. On top of your mortgage, you have all of your other expenses, your car, your monthly bills, your kids, etc. So now, instead of all of that being the case, you reverse that. So now you go and get this property. The property pays you. Your job pays you. You know what I mean? Right. You're this money and you're living for free so now you essentially don't have any bills because your job and your property are paying for your car etc and you're going to have a lot of money left over at the end of it all trust me but that's not money for you to keep and play with you keep investing that money into your property to make sure that your property is is in good standards and your tenants are living up to you know what i mean up to their standards and everything is good and then every so often at the end of the year after you file your taxes you see what's what you know what I mean? You go take you a vacation or whatever the case may be. But the main thing with this is freedom, because at the end of it all, you're going to have a property that's appreciated in value. You didn't really pay anything for it in whatever you did put down. And let's say you put the 20 percent down on it. Mm -hmm. After about 10 years, you've you've recouped all of your money through rent payments. You've recouped that back. So now you're just in the green. You know what I'm saying? Right. In 30 years or 20 years, when you sell this property, that's all profit. That half a million dollars or seven hundred thousand dollars because it's gonna appreciate in value more than likely. So let's say that half a million turned into seven hundred thousand. So now you've collected rent 
for 30 years. <laughs> no telling what that number is because you get to go up every year on your rent, $25, $50, whatever you're comfortable doing. So you're giving yourself mm -hmm. a raise every year. So you have this cash flow coming in every month on top of somebody else paying your mortgage, on top of the property appreciation, on top of the tax deductions and all of that cool shit that you get on the back end when it comes to, you know what I mean, you filing your taxes and your accountant doing their work. And then at the end of it all, you get to sell this property for this big fat ass number that you didn't even pay for? Like what? Mm, right, right. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are getting tremendous because I'm learning a lot from this show right here. Uh, Dude, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, because you hear me, I get so many mixed, hey, yeah, you should start off with the single family, which is a one door. And then you have other people that say, get, get a multi-family. I'm like, that don't make sense because if somebody moves out. Yeah, one door, you're screwed. Because like you said, if somebody move out, you stuck with that mortgage and whatever else right. they did. Pay on that the multi unit, the three to four unit sets you up to where if somebody moves out, you still got two other units covering a portion of your mortgage. Even if you got to come out of pocket, it ain't gonna be much. You know what I mean? Maybe a hundred or two. That ain't gonna be much. But by the end, by the time somebody moves out, you've saved up so much money from your job and from the other people paying your mortgage. You have a little bit of profit left over. That's gonna be nothing for you to pay for you to fix up that apartment, go find you another tenant, and get right back in the game. You know what mm, I mean? Right. Then. Also, the cool thing about this is, as I told y'all, as you go along and you're taking care of your property, the value goes up, right? Remember how I was saying, like, you paid like 500 grand for the property, but essentially it's going up and probably will get to like $200,000 over the life of the loan. Mm -hmm. You can take some of that money out in the process. Let's say 15 years down the line, the property's um, appreciated 100 grand. You can take some of that money out, let's say $50,000 out, use that money to go buy another multi-unit if you want to, without going in your pocket, using your own cash. Now you're pulling cash from your property to go get more property and you're not paying anything out of pocket for this shit. I love it. I love it. You, you, you did a video where you were at the old Cabrini Greens and you were talking about how what gentrification looks like, right? And you was like, man, this was Cabrini Green's project, one of the roughest uh, projects in Chicago. And then how they just leveled it out. And now they have these multi-million dollar condos and townhouses over there. And then you was like, don't run away from buying up the hood. <laughs> I thought that was so dope. So could you could you explain that a little bit more? Like how, I mean, because perception they wise, we, we think like we need to, because like else with it. perception wise, it's like, man, you want to move out of the hood and get mm -hmm. that's not really what you want to do. Because what happens when you do that is you're just like giving them a head start on what they're already about to do. You just don't know it or realize it yet. So their plan initially was, you know what, we're going to put all of the, you know, what I mean, poor people in the city. And, you know, what I mean, keep them in the slums and we're going to move out to the suburbs where all the nice houses and stuff are. But over time, people start to realize, oh, shit, downtown is in the city. They have the lakefront in the city. All of these things that are considered valuable now, these views, these, you know, what I mean, mm -hmm. these communities. And so now they're trying to reverse that. So now they want to put the wealthy people downtown and closer to, you know, what I mean, closer to the Bull Stadium and the Sox Stadium and where all of the sports events and all of these things are going on. And they want to move the poor people far out to the suburbs. But if you own some shit in these neighborhoods that are considered poor and they tell you not to buy in these neighborhoods because they're not worth anything. But if you pay attention to what's around you, like I said, you got the Bull Stadium, you mm -hmm. got the Sox Stadium, you got the Lakefront, you got all of these different valuable things. You're so close to downtown. Did you see the view from Cabrini Green in that Oh video? my God, dude. Christ. Like, <laughs> you were like walking distance yeah. from Michigan Avenue. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, if you can buy when it's the hood, for $50,000, you bought your house. In 20 years, you better believe they're going to start coming in and try and buy up this neighborhood and build it up and make it something that it wasn't before and try to tell you that it's not worth anything because look at it. Like, it's trash. It's got rats. The properties are abandoned. But the whole time, they know how much value this property has, which is why they're trying to trick you out of it. But if you hold it, but if you're an owner, you have the option to hold and not sell. But if you don't own anything, whoever owns your property will go for whatever they say, sell it off. And now you're 
stuck with this rich person telling you you got to move because they're about to blow up on your rent two thousand dollars you know what i'm saying yeah they did that in my hometown in new york in brooklyn it was like raggedy apartment buildings and stuff like that now you'll look at a a, a, an abandoned building, an old abandoned building that's going for like five mil. Yeah, the bro. same thing that was going for like 20,000 15 years ago is going for like $5 million. Imagine if, if we would have bought these properties and these, and these homes and these like small lots when we lived there and when we had the opportunity to when they weren't necessarily worth anything. But Again, this is not what we're taught. We're not taught to go out about to say that alone and own something and to put something in your name, have legacy, things like this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Go get cars and things that have no value to try and show status. But again, how you combat gentrification and things like that? Ownership, man. If you own your shit, they can't force you out. And if they do try to force you out, it'll be by a process called eminent domain. And through that process, they have to offer you a substantial amount of money for you to leave. Mm. You know, a substantial amount of money. That's when the government comes in and they want to build like a railroad um, tracks or something in the area. And they're like, you know what I mean? We got to get y'all out of here. That's not necessarily a gentrification process, but that's a process where they can force you out. And it's uh, called eminent domain. But when they do that, they have to pay you a handsome fee to do it. Hmm. So we got some comments. Uh, Malik says, "Oh, this is good, brother. Making me want to buy property right now." <laughs> Tanisha said, "Oh my God, they took over Flatbush, damn near." Yeah, you're right, Tanisha. They Brooklyn is Brooklyn's becoming a new Manhattan right now. Um, dude, th- this is so powerful because, like, when I was younger, nobody talked about real estate. No one. Like that wasn't. That was never in conversation at all. It wasn't going on in the barber shops. It wasn't going on the, on the basketball courts. It wasn't going on anywhere. Like, do you do you feel like there is a shift? Because I think I saw a post that you said um, recently. You put up a post that said, like, more minorities are buying properties, and then like we have the lowest foreclosure rate or something like that. Um, yeah, it was from it was a post from NACA. NACA was saying that um, mm-hmm. majority of their uh, people who come through their program are mar- minorities, and their foreclosure rate is probably less than um, 0.1 percent, which is extreme. Right. You know what I mean? And um, that just goes to show that you know black people can handle and maintain mortgages, minorities in general. You know what I mean? Not just black people because they help all type of minorities, and they're designed to help minorities and minority communities. And um, yeah, man, that's how I got my start. And uh, even the second one, because there was a loophole in the program, not even a loophole, it's just like, if you're married, you know what I mean? You can't do it because you're considered one. But I was taking my time with me to the program and my mortgage counselor, he was like, yo, y'all should just do this a second time with her. Then that way y'all really run up the bag because you will have a four unit, then she'll have a four unit too. And then y'all combine everything. And now y'all like got two four unit properties that can, you know what I mean? Pretty much pay for y'all dream home and whatever lifestyle y'all want to go and live. You know what I mean? And um, that's what we did the second time. And the second property actually ended up being like, just like something that I couldn't even really imagine, bro, because it's in like, a super duper high end gentrifying neighborhood in Chicago. Um, I don't know if you remember uh, or if you're familiar with Humble Park and like that buck yeah. area. When so, I first moved to Chicago, I was living in uh, near Logan Square. Okay, yeah. So all of that is completely changing. Bucktown, Humble Park, all that gone. It, it used to be like mainly Hispanic gangs, yeah. black, like poor projects, like low income neighborhood, right? Mm-hmm. Billion dollar properties going up left and right now. You know what I yeah. mean? Everywhere going crazy. And um, I was able to um, land a four unit property up here. And the property is so cool the way that it's laid out because it's a three unit building in the front of the lot and it's a coach house in the back of the lot. So it's a house and it's a three unit building, but it's considered a four unit property. And the house is the house is huge. Like there's a rooftop deck where I go to the rooftop, I can see the Chicago skyline downtown everything um so i'm not connected to my tenants anymore um Mm -hmm. it's like an ideal dream situation um it's a it's a 
a, a high rent area. I'm getting like sixteen hundred dollars a month for like one bedroom apartments. Like, yeah, it's a very high turnover over there too. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like you get a lot of yuppies coming through. Yeah, but you know, you want to know something though? I've only had one person move out. Hmm. It's been a few years, so I've only had one person move out. But nice. it's cool. I wanted them to move out anyway because I was able to go up on the rent substantially. The exactly. Rent went from thirteen hundred to sixteen hundred. So it was like, wow. yeah. So like when when you're creating your content, right? And you're talking about real estate, and you bring in entertainment with it, and and humor. Is, is that part of your like bringing? You know, ushering the new narrative of how real estate is viewed, or how yeah. financial literacy is, is yeah, obtained. How financial literacy is viewed, how it's delivered, and yeah. you know, it's like the whole image. Like you see me, I look like a rapper, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I used to rap. I'm just like, I can take my brand and turn it into something valuable still and make it cool because this isn't looked at as a cool thing, which is the problem in the black community. We be so concerned with being cool and looking cool. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make this shit look cool. I'm gonna make this shit sound cool. I'm gonna smoke my weed. I'm gonna talk my shit. I'm gonna listen to my rap music. I'm gonna make my content with rap music in the background. So motherfuckers will actually listen to this shit and like, it'll catch their ear. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I'm doing is intentional. Like I'm extremely intelligent with the way that I produce my content. Like I know a motherfucker look at it like, man, dude, silly as hell. Like, no, this is just a character that I'm playing right now. Like, you know no what I'm saying? I, I peeped that game. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 yo, I was like, he is, he's clever. Yeah. The way you, the way you move, bro, I love it. Because yeah, yeah. I, I think for <laughs> like, I'm really from the streets. Of- yeah, because I think that we're, we're rhythmic people. Right. So when we're a- when you're able to fuse that that pop culture, uh, urban pop culture into education like that, yeah. magical. That's what Walt Disney would t- do something like that if he could. And that was my whole thing, man. Like I'm like, if I'm gonna do this and if I'm gonna walk in this lane, it's gotta be my way and it's gotta be something different than what everybody else is doing. It can't be no old boring ass shit yeah. where I'm just information and it's coming off corny as fuck and I'm coming off like I'm better than everybody I'm like I'm already there like nah motherfuckers I'm 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 cool but I'm just like y'all I still smoke I still motherfucking listen to trap music I still like you know what I mean I, I, <laughs> right. I, I good to see my cousins and them like you know what I'm saying like all of that shit like it's no different I'm just like a person that's just educated himself and is just trying to put myself in the position and and ride this wave of like content creation and like you know what i mean where the future is going and i'm trying to bring my people along the wave with me and show them that it's all good and it's nothing to be scared of and it's people out here that look like y'all talk like y'all dress like y'all that's doing this shit too and in addition to that like i'm not just gonna be like no regular degla motherfucker like i'm gonna entertain i know what y'all want to see because this mm-hmm. is the shit i wanted to see when i was looking for this shit and i couldn't yes. find to read the entire money master the game fucking a thousand pages like you know what i'm saying like i had to go to the robert kiyosaki seminar and sit through that shit and watch them try to get thirty thousand dollars out of me you know what i'm saying like just like all of these different things that i'm trying to have y'all avoid doing and like creating a whole different lane for y'all to learn and get this shit you know what i'm saying and and, um, and i love it i swear it, bro I, I love it so much because when i was growing up the again the drug dealer, if the drug dealer sat me down on the side and he cracked his 40 and he broke down like, look, young blood, what you need to do is buy some of this real estate. I would have paid attention. But it in, in our era, at least in my era, like if you were a hardworking person and you, you know, worked for the man or whatever, and they would call him the L7, they would call him a square because of it, right? You'd be like, oh, you don't want to be that dude. You want to be the charismatic guy that has the fancy cars with the gold chains and all the girls around him. But if that guy would have took some of the youth from the hood and be like, yo, I'm going to buy all y'all some ice cream. I want y'all to pay attention to this game right here. What? Probably would own half of Brooklyn by now. So I love the delivery that you're giving because I'm one, your, your, your Instagram count, like your, your followership is, is just massive. <clears throat> the way people are rocking with you, it speaks for itself. So that's why I was so excited to have you on the show because I was like, your delivery is like unmatched. I don't see nobody doing it 
the way you do it, bro. I don't, I don't, and I don't take that for granted either, man. Um, because it's it's been a lot of hard work to just build up my following to ten thousand followers, and I'm, you know, what I mean, I'm really looking forward to doing more this year. That's why I've been creating and pumping out more content because I see that's what people want. And um, when you have people locking in, like, yo, man, we like this, keep on doing this, like that, lets you know, all right, I'm headed in the right direction. I just gotta keep on doing it and polishing it up and making it better as I go. But at this point now, I can't stop because I'm so deep in it. You know what I mean? I got so many people like depending on specific content. I got people yeah. like, man, when you drop the next episode to the landlord, like, and it's just like, shit, I got a fucking producer. That's like right. That. You had the uh, um, what, what was the name of that show? It was, uh, it was a segment that you had. I have the landlord life, the Renaissance report, bro. Uh, I got collecting gems. I got a lot of content, bro. Like I got a lot of content. You, lot you of had you you had one like because again you don't see the life of a landlord. Yeah, so when yeah. you when you did a hey look I'm about to go to this house they're having some plumbing issues I'm gonna yeah. get this this worm snake whatever yeah. it is you bought it at, like you yeah. literally like walked us through and now like because. A person that doesn't see it and he'd be like, hey, you don't want to have to go. You made it look so simple. It was like, damn, it, it's not as bad as I thought it would have been. You like that. Cause I thought because what I was doing initially, like I said, I've been in this shit for six, six years at this point. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I was doing service calls where I would just call a a, a, a plumber or whoever out for every single issue. And after a while, I'm just seeing what they're doing. Like, bro, you just charged me a hundred dollars for this two minute ass job you just did. And it's like, I gotta pay it. Like, I can't be like, man, bro, you was your 200. So I'm like, man, all right, fuck it. They sell these motherfucking tools that you just used at Home Depot for the amount that I just paid you. I can buy a snake for $100. You know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't call the guy with a snake out five times in that in five years. So I just spent $500 on just having right. a motherfucking rock the tub or some simple shit like that. And it's like, nah, dude, like, fuck that. Right, like, right. Just, do this shit yourself. Some stuff you can do yourself. And um, that's just kind of what I've been showing people. Just giving people just like an inside look on like everything, like some of the good stuff. Like I've had a tenant who um owned a store, man, downtown. I ended up getting like all of the fires, mics and Jordans and Travis Scott's and all of that shit just without having to pay extra for them, wait in line or nothing. So it's benefits to this shit too. But it's also at the same time. So it's just like, man, you got to take the good with the bad and know that over the long term, you're going to end up winning, you know? Okay, so you we heard the good. Now tell us some of the bad. Um, that shit, even like on like the Landlord Life episode, the like the end of season one, I had a guy who I kind of had to trick out of my apartment. And um, when he left, man, the apartment was fucked up. He had a dog down there, a Rottweiler. He like chewed up the baseboard, scratched up the door. It was hair everywhere. I mean, like left nasty ass food in the refrigerator. I had to replace like the stove and the microwave and all of the cabinets because the cabinets were like burnt and like I had grease. It just it was he left the apartment really nasty. And um it cost me a lot of money just to clean up, you know what I'm mm. saying? And then I had to like get a lot of like his old stuff removed out of the apartment. So that ended up costing me a lot of money in addition to doing a renovation on the apartment. You know what I'm saying? So I spent mm -hmm. a lot of money cleaning the apartment up and then I had to do a renovation on the apartment. A tenant ain't supposed to leave your apartment fucked up like that. But dude was just kind of like bitter about a lot of stuff. Um, His brother owned the property before us and he sold it to us. And like you, like I told you before, this was a predominantly Puerto Rican neighborhood before. And his brother was a Puerto Rican guy, but he's a property developer. And I kind of like took on his brother as like a, as like, he was like a headache to his older brother. You know what I'm saying? He's just like, okay. man, you know, you had a garden unit, stay down there or whatever. But he told him, I'm about to sell the property and these people are paying a hefty price for this building. So more than likely they're going to go up on your rent again because the neighborhood is changing. He was an older Puerto Rican guy who didn't really like want to conform or change and just understand what was going on. So he was trying to buck a lot, you know what I mean? Okay. And you know, I tried to be cool with him. I tried to like, you know what I mean? Just like work with him a lot of times, but after a while, it just like, it just got, just became too much, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, how I got him out was his apartment started flooding and it was a quick, cheap fix. I just had to get a check valve change or something like that, right? And uh, instead of me doing that, I just kept on letting the apartment flood. <laughs> Every time it rained, it should have flood. I'm like, you want to keep dealing with that? 
you know, so he just was like, you know, fuck it. I'm out. He was like, I'm out. <laughs> he ended up leaving, but like, again, he left a mess and it was just like a headache. Right. But it was better than him staying because I would have ended up missing out on a whole bunch of rent. It's still COVID. People still don't got to pay their rent. Thank God I've been able to collect rent every single month from all of my tenants. I'm not behind any of that. So like, that's a major blessing. He was the only person that was trying to pull it. But God like made a way for, to get him the fuck on. You know what I mean? Let so. me let me ask you this, Apika. You were speaking about rent. Like, okay, like Chicago. Is this a what they call a tenant friendly or landlord friendly? Tenant boy, you can't do shit to your tenant. Okay. Rent. So like, do you plan on looking at properties other uh, other states that are landlord friendly? Um, I like where I'm at, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna find it, bro. Like I'll. I do whatever. Like I did a landlord life episode where I went to Michigan, mm -hmm. and they had, like this um, area right outside of um, I forgot the name of the damn uh, the little town now, but it was uh, right on right outside of Lake Michigan, right on Lake Michigan, where like they got like these dunes and these beaches, and they got like these little um, like they call them cabins, and like okay. these little like these little Airbnb towns, man. And they had some really nice properties out there where people go um, for like. Airbnb to like go to the lake and go surfing and just like you know kick it on the beach and all of that type of stuff mm -hmm. and uh, it was a really low key quiet town in Michigan and the properties were extremely uh, inexpensive I'm talking like forty fifty thousand dollars for a house you know what I mean and wow. um, I was thinking about looking into that and uh, just some other places as well it would just have to be within driving distance for me because I can't see myself investing in a place where I can't see the property that makes sense at all like. I don't trust like a property manager enough to just mm. let them my property like that and just me just forget about it. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I need to know what's going on, man. Now, how do you feel about flipping? I'm actually trying to get into flipping because right now my situation isn't allowing me to um, go get another loan from a, mm -hmm. a bank or anybody else just based on like how my income is set up and like, you know, how I'm doing my taxes and everything right now. But I got cash though. So it's like, Flipping would just like make the most sense. That's all. So, so I, I'm very open minded to it. So with 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 because I, I appreciate all the value you're bringing too. And by the way, you guys, if you want to type in your questions or if you want to go live with Andre Haynes, that that's cool too. We'll we'll go live uh, and you guys can ask him some questions because I know a lot of people want to get into the real estate game, but they don't know where to start. So what? What would you suggest to a person, e even myself? I want to get back into the game. Um, where would you suggest that I, I get started? Education, man. Um, okay. Just start trying to like educate yourself because at the end of the day, you can go and get a loan and um, still not know what the fuck you're doing. You know what I mean? People do it every. People do this all the time. People who are out looking for properties right now don't know a single thing about real estate. Like their agent is just hijacking their deal because they're dealing with a person who has an approval letter, but the person doesn't know anything about real estate. They don't know what to look for, where to look. They don't know anything about location. They just they just went and got a, a letter because they have a job and they got good credit. You know what I mean? And they hear the interest rates are low. They're like, fuck it, I'm gonna buy a property right now because it's a good time to get a property. But they don't have any real education about like, you know what I mean, what to look for, like good schools, amenities in the area for tenants. If you're looking for a rental property, um, is this location um, close to like good jobs? Like, you know, like whether it be factories or um, just, just big, you know what I mean? Big businesses, stuff like that. Um, just like, what's coming to the area like are there are there um other properties that are coming to the area that are going to add value to the area are they building um different like things like walmart target starbucks different things that are going to like make people want to live in the area make the area desirable like all of these things matter when it comes to you looking for property because if you're going to hold this for the long term you want to know what's coming to your area because let's say in 10 years or i'm not even say 10 years i'm not let's say in two or three years they plan on building a fucking paint factory yeah. around the corner from you. That's going to affect your property value because that's called, uh, that's going to pretty much um, pollute the air and cause environmental issues. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So you need to be looking for and paying attention to because these are things that will affect your property value and affect your neighborhood. And a lot of things people don't know and don't understand when they're going into this process. And it's just extremely hard to just go in 
and feel like you know the things that you need to know when you've never done this before. And like people don't really understand, like when they're going to buy a home or a multi-unit property or whatever, this is pretty much the biggest financial decision that you're going to make in your life. Like when else are you ever going to take on a $200,000, dollars $400,000 loan in order to get something? Mm-hmm. Like it just, it Let me ask one. you this. Would, would you consider this area to be a good... I, I was just driving. I was going to... Homewood Flossmore area, right? Driving through Markham. They Amazon just built this massive distribution center over there in Markham. Would you would you say like, hey, that would that bring up a uh, hey, I, I might want to look into this area right here? And then I know they just built the Obama High School, Obama, Barack Obama High School over there. Too. I wouldn't base it off just that alone, but okay. like there are other things you can look into like you can go into the city records and pull up like building permits and different things and see what's coming to the area and see if that's the only thing that's going to be in the area because they just built one of those in maywood too you know what i mean that don't necessarily make maywood a desirable area to live in gotcha okay but at the same time hell that provides a whole bunch of jobs for people who didn't have a whole lot to look forward to in an area that was extremely poor so that provides a lot of opportunity for those people in that neighborhood which could mean that the neighborhood may end up coming up now because people are having money now people are able to go and like like you say fix up on their properties and do different things to make the neighborhood more valuable and more desirable hmm. but i would also like i say look into other factors that are going on in those particular neighborhoods like what else do they build do they have good schools do they have expressways do they have transportation for people to buses trains things like that like i say because all of those things are extremely important when it comes to like neighborhood values and things right man see see like i I was thinking all right they they're bringing up uh, uh amazon here i'm just thinking about all right they're bringing jobs so that means but I, I didn't think about like schools, transportation, the transportation kind of whack out there because it might, I think it cuts off at a certain time. Um, and then of course the expressway is further down like through Harvey or something. That That's that's powerful. So like you also, not alongside your real estate company, you have a media company too. Yeah, and that's where I produce all my content through. Yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about that. Like what do you got going on with your media side? Um, so in addition to, like I said, the real estate, I have a media company, which is what I run my TV show, the Renaissance Report through, which is on YouTube. Um, it's a, a five show series, um, and like just my step-by-step blueprint, uh, which I designed like to kind of give people the blueprint and the steps that I took to kind of get my shit together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, it's a it's an idea that I came up with watching Snoop Dogg show um, and channel uh, GGN and also like the Daily Show, so it's like a combination of both. I like to describe it as like a um, like a black business version of Saturday Night Live, you know. Nice, nice. Yeah, where it's it's, it's educational and um, entertaining at the same time. Uh, the skits are funny as hell. The information I'm giving is funny, and I'm pretty direct uh, with the information that I'm giving too. Um, in addition to that, I have the Landlord Life that I produce, which is um, probably like doing the best out of all of the series that I have right now because people like just really want to see what's going yeah. on being a landlord because a lot of people are becoming property owners in the fact that somebody's actually like giving them an inside look. It's not like like one of those HGTV shows where they're like just doing flips and all that stuff. Like, no, nah, I own a property already, the property already in order, got people living in it, but they motherfucking toilet stopped up or some shit like that. And I got to go in and fix the stuff that you're going to deal with on a day-to-day basis. And uh, I'm 25 episodes in on that. Um, mm. I'm in my second season, about to wrap up my second season on that. And um, that's doing really good. Um, and I have Collecting Gems which is a series where it's just like you know, motivational mindset content with like some pretty cool images of like for me, like flying my drone and like some cool stuff like inside of my house, like um, like my cars collection and little stuff like that, that I wanted to show. And um, yeah, man, just, just working on a lot. I got a documentary on my page, bro. Um, in addition to like, I just created the new shit with the reels as the stock market turned. So just like yeah. my mind is just running and I'm always creating some new shit or just like, getting my ideas out but that's what me having this freedom has allowed me to do because before I was rapping and I was creating 
And I had to kind of like bottle all of that shit up and go and work in the cubicle, mm. you know, figure out what I was going to do because rapping wasn't working out for me. But I was able to, like I say, get free again and have my time. And now I've been able to like create and curate these ideas. And man, like they've been coming together massively for me. And this year, um, I've planned on like scaling my content, putting my content in front of more people, making sure more people are able to um, take in my t- content and get value from my content. And um, probably, man, 90% of my content is free. The only thing that I do sell is an introduction to real estate course, which is like- Yeah, I tell said, me about that. Well, because I, I know I need to take that. I'm, I'm not trying to figure this shit out by myself, bro. Straight <laughs> up. Fuck oh, all that. I need, I need a coach. I, I need, like, Andre Hatcher was my coach with the notary joint. You know what I mean? So, like, I was able to, like, breeze through notaries that were in the game for, like, seven, ten years and do some things, some remarkable stuff in one year because of having a coach. So now my mind is always on get a coach first and then you guys figure it out and then, you know, succeed from that point. So tell us a, a, about your programs where – you know, anybody here can actually go ahead and purchase this thing, man. And, um, yeah, and Dre's my guy too, man. Shout out to Andre Hatcher, man. Just real good brother. Uh, Salute solid. to that brother. Um, my introduction to real estate course is a course that I designed um, to kind of like get people ready for the home buying process when you are out um, looking for your first property or your first investment property. What to look for, um, what neighborhoods to look in, how to find these neighborhoods. Um, what websites and what graphs and charts you should be using, you know what I mean? Um, Just like in a lot of different things that I cover in my course, um, it's like real estate types and classes, like what makes a good deal, um, when is a a good time to buy in the market, Um, what I got a whole list over here, Um, like how to utilize leverage, just like so many different things. The course is um, over three hours long Mm. and probably 30 different video modules, man. So it's a lot. And, um, it's high end, high quality content. I don't do anything like um, just low quality, like iPhone content and stuff like that. I do sometimes, but like when it comes to like stuff like that, it's like really high quality content. The graphics are like high end. It's not just like a basic Zoom course. So you're definitely going to get your money's worth. Um, I'm currently selling it for $50. The original price is I think like $149.99. You selling so- it for how much, bro? Bucks. I'm buying that shit to as shit. Bree, well, hey, what's the website, bro? Fuck all that. I'm oh, buying that shit like right now. Yeah, click the link in my Instagram bio, man. It'll take you, you know what I mean, right to it. Bree, put his Instagram Instagram bio in the. Ch- this is crazy. He said fifty dollars. Hey, bro, like what? I'm, and this is what I say, man, like I'm really not about like trying to like get like money from people because like I've set my life up. Real estate has set me free already. So for yes. Me, Price so you're doing it for the love, and then like, it, of course, the people that I didn't it, the people that pay pay attention. <laughs> Let, let's just be honest. Like pretty much, I, I want you to pay for it to make sure that you actually take the course because I give it because if I give it to you for free, you're not gonna take it. You're serious. not you're not gonna take it serious. And I've done, and, and initially when I launched, I gave away a hundred courses for free the first day that I launched. I made sure I did a giveaway just to let y'all know, like, yo, I don't, I'm not out here. I don't give a fuck about the money. Like, the money gonna come because of the type of person I am. Like, I just attract money. Like, it's just like that for me right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, mm-hmm. the book, mm-hmm. to be free so I don't have to, like, stress about money. I can put my time and my energy into helping people, and that's what's gonna generate everything that I need for me. You know what I mean? So, right. like, I put this stuff together and all of the content that I put together, man, with the main objective to help people and change people's lives as best as I can without it being just normal and boring ass information that you receive. You know what I mean? And my course is cool. I'm sitting back with my little G pen talking my shit. You know what I mean? My little graphics popping up and I'm giving y'all some real game for real. And y'all are like, and if you, and I tell people this all the time with these courses, a course doesn't work unless you do. So mm-hmm. take the information, take mm-hmm. note, and actually go out and apply it and use it. And I promise you, the shit's going to work. Yeah. Gonna work. I, like, even, I, I'm getting it today. I know for a fact I'm going to grab that. Yeah, it is, and it's super cool because I, the course, I teach it like... Do you teach a, it like you're, you're, you're doing the, the Instagram, like entertaining and all that too? It's not that entertaining. It's more, it's more serious. It's a little oh, it's more, more tactical then. Okay. Yeah. But I do, like I said, I do talk my shit. I crack jokes, you know what I mean? I say a cuss word here and there, but I, I, I am a little bit more professional in the course because it is a course. 
But um, when it comes to this stuff, man, it's I make it real easy and, si and simple for people to understand. And with the NACA program and the FHA loans that I tell people to go and get, mm -hmm. that's that's way less money than what would you have to put down in what I teach in the course. In the course, I teach you I have to put down 50% as an investor. But as a first time home buyer, you can take the information from that course, go and put no money down or three and a half percent down and still do the same stuff that I teach in that course with a first time home buyer's loan. So like it's like it's so much like information and just like quality in there. I think a lot of people are intimidated by it and are scared of it because, you know, real estate takes time. You have to learn it. It's not like stock options. Stock options are something you can learn and then you jump in and you start making money right away. Real yeah. estate is a long term hold. You like build wealth over time. And I think it, it intimidates people. But man, if you want to free up your time and like not have to go and like clock in. Like, man, get you some income properties that's going to generate that residual income for you every month that's going to allow you to live for free. Because at the end of the day, the key to all of this shit is removing your biggest bill. What's your biggest bill? Your mortgage, your rent, and your car note. Those mm -hmm. are your biggest bills. If you can eliminate those, look at how much extra money you have. $1,200 a month, three, four $400 a month on a fucking car note. That's about $1,500 a month. That's what fifteen thousand dollars a year times ten plus enough. That's about eighteen thousand dollars a year. What could you do with an extra eighteen twenty grand a year? Right. And I'm just saying this is on a minimum scale. Some people are paying fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, two thousand dollars a month in rent and mortgage. Some people have five and six hundred dollar car notes. I'm speaking on a minimum scale. Yeah. Imagine if you could go and keep the extra eighteen to twenty five grand every year. Invest that money in something, invest that money in you a business, invest that money in the stock market. Just like have that money working for you as opposed to you giving it to somebody else. Like that's life changing shit, man. It is. And then and then having that free time to do that too. And then too, in addition to that, it's gonna free your time up so that you can go and create other things. Yeah. It's done for me, man. I've just been just like a just a ball of creativity for the past few years. Because I was stuck in the cubicle for like six years, just like making these phone calls and feeling like, yo, this is a dead end and shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But to be able to be free again, to have my time free again, to be able to write and create and just pick up my phone and do some cool it's priceless. Stuff, man, it don't get no better than that, bro. And, and, and that, you no know, that's why that. I wanted to make sure I, I, I had you on the show, bro, because a lot of the notaries that we do have come on here, they're stuck in this. They, they got out of one job and created another job for themselves with the notary stuff and they're running rampant and they're stamping and they're driving to, and you just created another rat race for yourself. So I'm like, people, man, we, you know, we have to bring in different elements of different people of different industries to show them that, hey, look, this is about making leverage, as you would say, more money and more so time for yourself. Yeah, leverage that money into something. So if you're making good money or if you're sitting on some cash, man, go put it into something that's going to make more money as opposed to you constantly working and constantly just like doing this whole circle thing. Like you say, yeah. running around. Like it doesn't make sense for you to do that, especially if you're making good money. Like if you can invest some of that money, put a small percentage of that money to the side, watch it work just to test it. Because people are so scared, man. People are made things. Man, what if I, I think people are so scared? What if I lose my money? You already losing money because you're buying stuff. <laughs> you're losing money and just, you don't consider it losing money. Like, don't, right. that's shit. That's bullshit. Don't let that shit matter. Like, you know what I mean? Like, go and put $2,000 into Tesla right now and leave it for three years. Watch how much that $2,000 turn into. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just like, people are scared, man. The stock market is risky. No, nah, that bullshit you doing is risky. Like, you know what I'm saying? You waking up every day depending on this nine to five job is risky as fuck because as soon as another COVID or something like that hit and this bitch shut down, how you gonna make money? Fast. The market never shut down. Only on Saturday and Sunday, the stock market shut down. Outside of that, bro, you can make money every single day without leaving your house. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so many ways to get it out here that we're not taught and we're not exposed to. And it's just like, Man, when I got a hold of this shit, it's just like, 
man, ain't no turning back. Like, y'all should have never showed me this shit. What Dave Straight? Right. <laughs> man, you funny. Like, man, y'all should have never showed me this shit, man. Like, I'm gonna go tell everybody. Yasmin is like, hey, uh, what's the website? So, Yasmin, you're gonna have to go to his Instagram page. I think that's I where he has. Too. I got a website too. I'll type my website in too. Yeah, man. yeah, please. www. Definitely, bro. Yeah, this is powerful, man. I, I hope you guys like really took took wind of this stuff, man, because this is where we need to go, y'all. This yeah. is this is how we need to capture back our time, our essence, our greatness, our divinity, all of that, man. The see, uh, who who was it that said that? I think it was Robert Kiyosaki that said, "You know what a paycheck is? A paycheck is a uh, money that a person tells you to forget about your dreams, come work on mine. Yeah, that's what they, they bribe you with that. That's a bribe, pretty much. Like, hey man, listen, I got this idea. I need people to come and work on it for me for a little bit of nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm money and it's just like, man, what? <laughs> like, right. Like, but if you're not thinking like that, and if that's not how you're taught to think, you don't really understand it. You know what I mean? Like, you just gotta like really unlearn everything you're taught and relearn ownership and they don't teach ownership in school like just and it's crazy because if you think about it from the time you're a little kid all the way until college and everything else you're programmed to be a worker like just look at the structure of the school from kindergarten through eighth grade it's the same thing as a job it's an eight hour day you go early in the morning you get a bathroom break you get a lunch break you get another bathroom break end of the day you repeat the same thing monday through friday all the way up until college where things change a little bit but even still it's structured damn near the same way and then you go into the workforce you start work early you get a bathroom break you get a lunch break you get a bathroom break then it's the end of the day and you repeat this monday through friday so they're programming us from the age of five all the way up until we're able to actually go off into the workforce. And they're not teaching entrepreneurship. They're not teaching business. They're not teaching the stock market. They're not teaching how to understand the stock market, how to understand the chart, when to enter a stock, when to exit a stock. They're not teaching any of these things in school, whether it's college, grade school, fucking grad school, they ain't teaching the shit because they mm -hmm. want you to go and work for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even, even business. They're teaching you how to be a manager. They're teaching business management. They're not teaching you how to be an owner, how to be a CEO. They don't teach you how to file your taxes. Like these are things that are not in the school system. Why? I don't fucking know, but it's not out there. So these are things that you're going to have to go and teach yourself or go and um, get specified education, which is what I do. Um, I buy courses for people like myself all the time, which are extremely cheap. Um, and I know it'd be seeming like a little scammy and iffy sometimes because that's just how black people are. We just think everything is a fucking scam. But honestly, I, it is, bro. Like I, I, I had to like get out of that state of mind where I think everything is a scam. Like because I bought Ty Capital's options course and that shit just changed my life. Like you know what I'm mm. saying? It's just like certain stuff. You just got to get out of that like that scam phase. Like for example, I tell somebody like my course fifty dollars. Man, I ain't buying that shit. Like so, you'll go take Grant Cardone course, the same information for ten thousand dollars. Facts. Ten grand though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm telling you, my shit fifty dollars, and I'm giving you the same information in a way cooler way. I look like you. I'm talking like you. All these different things, but you would be like, no, nah, that's a scam. So it's like a lot of times it's our own mindset that holds us back. Like once I got past that. And I realized that my brothers and sisters are actually out here providing valuable information, just like you. You went and took Dre's notary course, just off the strength. Like, you know what? I, I, let me let me go and do something different because me steady telling myself everything is a scam or this ain't gonna work. That shit ain't been working. So let me go and try the other way around, and hopefully, you know what I mean. I'll get something different. And now look where you are. You're hosting your own show about the fucking notary business. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. you take a course. And you betting on yourself and you saying, you know what, I'm going to try something different. Look where it's gotten you. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are the things that we have to do more of. We have to, like, bet on ourselves. We have to, like, invest in ourselves. We have to believe in our brothers and sisters way more and, like, understand that everybody's not out here trying to scam and get over on us. You do, know? Do, you, do you foresee that changing? Like, with all of the, the shows that are going on with the Black Wealth Renaissance, uh, EYL, all of um, these podcasts? Yeah. 
working our asses off to, you know, to change the narrative. Of course, there are still motherfuckers out here to fuck up the game and are still doing scammy ass bullshit. But, you know, we got to kind of like get past that and like be able to weed those people out. And if people are having issues with those kind of people, like, man, call them out and like we'll mm. do, do as a community to get them out of here. And Facts. we like want to keep the real ones uplifted and providing the information that they provide them. Because there's a lot of us out here that's providing a lot of dope ass valuable information, man. And um, we don't need like motherfuckers out here fucking it up for, you know what I mean, for the real ones. So so wrapping this up, man, what's on the horizon? Like, like what what do you where do you see your brand in the next oh. five years? This, this is point. this is this is and I'm gonna tell you, bro, this is for you to watch back five years from now and you look at your, your younger self and be like, you know what? I predicted that shit. Or, yes, um, I was going to do that. This scale and everything that I'm doing now, because five years ago, um, I was writing all of these ideas down on paper, whether it was the Renaissance report, whether it was my mindset matters, merchandise. I need to get that too. Yeah. Whether it was, um, I'll, I'll be launching everything on Friday is going to, okay. I'm going to be doing Orders is going to be limited pieces. I just I just don't want everybody exposed to my. <laughs> I'm with you. Especially if this ain't like what it is with you. If this like if you're not a person who's like mindset oriented and if you're not with this brand and if you're not trying to spread like awareness, don't rock my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like period. Like this shit is designed for a special kind of person and I'm standing on that shit. Like I don't want. I just don't want everybody rocking my shit. You know what I'm saying? But Thanks. fucking with the brand and this what you want, man. Grab it. Um, I'll be doing a pre order. Starting Friday, I'm gonna run the pre-orders for two weeks, and after that, I'm gonna ship and um go on to my next release. I got a few releases coming out. I got a couple of different designs, and um just working on a lot, man. But in five years, I see myself scaling, bro. Just like, cause where I am now compared to where I was five years ago, it's crazy because to see your ideas come to life, like I wrote this logo down on a piece of paper. I wrote the, the the thought bubble. I wrote mindset matters. You know what I'm saying? Like on a piece of paper, like, yeah, that's going to be my logo. And to see it on merchandise and apparel now is just like, like right. my, you know what I'm saying? I wrote the 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 scripts and everything for the Renaissance report um, with characters in mind and all of these different things and to be able to click on YouTube and to see myself acting and hosting a TV show like is amazing. So in five years, bro, I just see myself doing everything that I can possibly dream of and everything that I want to do and everything that's on like my timeline, like scaling my brand, scaling my TV show, scaling my content and just like adding way more value to people on a bigger level. Right now, it's just like the very, very beginning for me. I'm feeling like, cause I'm starting to get a lot of um, people reaching out to me to do these podcasts and I'm starting to get a lot of exposure and be put in front of a lot of people. And I feel like that's what God has been preparing me for. And um, I'm just gonna keep on rolling with this shit, bro. And uh, keep on, like I say, trying to provide value and as much like content and quality to the culture as I can. And um, and I'm praying that that people gonna rock with me and they gonna like, you know what I mean? Fuck with the brand and just help me grow, you know? Dude, salute to you, man. Salute, salute, salute. That, I love it, man. I love everything. <laughs> like when I first got exposed to you, I think I've probably seen some of your videos before you were on Andre's uh, podcast, but then it was like, it, like you started popping up everywhere on me. I was yeah. like, and then just like you were doing, like what? Yeah, one video it looked like he was on Vlad TV and shit. Yeah, like drum set behind you and shit. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> man, I, that was that was a clip from my documentary, man. Y'all gotta check out my YouTube channel, man. It's like all of my content is there, and it's just broken down into like like I say the individual series that I got. You got my documentary, you got the landlord life, collecting gems, you got the Renaissance report. So you can go to that one platform and see all of my content and um. You probably you're gonna be on the channel for a while because it's gonna suck you in and you're just gonna uh end up liking it, man. Uh hopefully y'all do go and subscribe to the channel. Um be on the lookout for the link when I drop it on Friday to get the merchandise. Um click the link that I just dropped in the mm -hmm. chat. I want to get the course right now. Like I said, it's on sale for $50. I'm not sure when I'm gonna bump it back up to the 150, but if y'all are interested, go grab that thing now. And mm -hmm. um yeah, man, if you have any questions about anything real estate related, stock market related, just finance related, um, just any just anything you need to like get your mind right. That's just not traditional, but like just still kind of entertaining, man. Come follow me. I got what y'all need. I promise you um, my page is 
it's pretty cool and uh, it's getting better. <laughs> it, it definitely is, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank Renaissance 125 Andre Hayes for being on the Notary War Room. I appreciate you, brother. I wish you nothing but the best in cash flow. A lot of cash flow. I want your show should be on fucking Netflix, Hulu, and all that shit, bro. I'm telling you, man. On it, bro, that's why I'm creating as much as I can. That's well, why. I shit, talk to Dame Dash. Call call Dame Dash and have the shit on Dame Dash Studios too. My man, my man, my man. Hey, appreciate you, Tiger, for real. Hey, no problem, bro. I'll talk to you soon, man. I'm gonna go cop that shit right now too. By the way, I appreciate you. you. Heard. Good night. <laughs>